Is it the grace you have shown us? Is it your loyalty to us? Is it your compassion? Is it your provision? You have been good to us. And we worship you. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. standing I want you to pray a prayer to God before we may worship again a little bit I want you to ask God to break the wall between you and him I, I sense that there is an invitation but there is a wall and many of us are not able to access the dimension where God is calling us into there is a war I don't know it could be a war of distraction it could be a war of guilt it could be a war of inadequacy whatever it is worries I want you to ask God to break the walls Ask him, go ahead, talk to him. Lord, break every wall between me and you. Break every barrier, break every wall standing. Oh. 
Clap your hands, give Jesus praise tonight. You know me until you clap well for Jesus. I'm not going to ask you to stop. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise tonight. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise tonight. Give praise to Yeshua. Give praise to Yeshua. Praise to Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah, Akule Jema, Yeshua, Amashia, Lion of Judah.
Yeshua. Amasia. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands for sin. Everyone here that is sick, somebody came here with front of head and God is healing you now. I take authority over every affliction, I take authority over every infirmity right now i command your body to be made whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet by the blood of the lamb i declare you healed now i declare you healed now i declare you free now i declare you delivered now in the name of jesus my father said to me this afternoon he says don't see the lord help is available for those that need it right now anyone in need of help in any dimension receive help from above receive help from above in the name of jesus give him praise thank you lord you're welcome to revolution um, according to the poster is day two but according to when God began is day three give Jesus a big hand of praise before you are seated I want to honor God for my biological father who is here all the way from Kumba that we thank you for being here clap your hands give Jesus praise one thing is sure for those of you who have made up your mind to attend the convention from the start to the end your life will never remain the same how many of you were truly blessed yesterday something happened to you yesterday for that can we say father thank you thank you for the word that came to us thank you for the impartation of the word thank you father in jesus precious name amen please be seated and let's see how god will help us are within the time we have thank you Jesus some of the things I'll be saying today will maybe um, cause a little shaking in your mind or theology but I beg you to just open your heart and listen uh, because <laughs> thank you Jesus yesterday I began to talk to us thank you Holy Spirit I don't know I'm seeing somebody in the hospital on that oxygen and I want to preach but I feel an interruption to make a declaration I don't know who has somebody in the hospital in a very critical condition but that's the picture I just saw I decree right now divine intervention it won't be here and hear bad news Father, let this word go now and find that individual. Whoever is in that critical condition. Lord, I ask for intervention now. Anybody here in having somebody in a critical condition? Okay. Just. Just. Father, now. In the name that is above every name. I release your hand. Your right hand of power visit that individual and break the chain of the enemy now by the blood of the lamb i decree and i declare their freedom in the name of jesus amen let the hand of god be stretched forth and let the testimony break forth in jesus name amen it is done 
It is Lord. Now, please listen. Yesterday, I began to talk to us about it's done. It's done. I began to talk to us about manifestation and several pastors and different people have called me in fact somebody wrote me and said was I preaching to pastors or to members that they did I said God told me to pastor pastors and by the by my ordination I cannot preach anything less than that if you know it's difficult for me to preach less than that I say even me sometimes I ask myself who am I talking to can you take your volume a little bit down so sometimes I ask myself if the people even understand what I'm sharing but I know you understand hallelujah the endless expectation of creation awaits your manifestation growing up I've heard that scripture several times but as I begin to study, because this year the Lord told me, my prophetic word this year is to study to show yourself a proof. So I've been studying a lot. And I told you yesterday that you should have a body to manifest. And God has given you grace to manifest when you get to heaven or you get to meet God you will, your greatest regret will be the fact that God will show you what he gave you that you never used and you will see the number of people that were lined up awaiting your manifestation that their deliverance was tied to your manifestation and I need to emphasize to us that when we speak of manifestation in this context, it is far beyond healing and deliverance. It is far beyond people falling down and waking up. Those things are manifestations of the spirit, no doubt. But you see, the majority of us will not have the opportunity to manifest God like that by the ordination of our calling I told you yesterday you will not go to the bank and pray for somebody to fall under the anointing to prove that you have a manifestation and let me let me say this to us so your mind will catch up with what I want to tell you As I study, God told me that um, if we truly step into the reality of salvation, many of us will not have what to do again. And I was asking Lord, what does that mean? He said, if salvation is truly and thoroughly preached, nobody who receive salvation will be sick. If it is thoroughly preached and tomorrow we enter spiritual entrainment and I will show you why I said that today and so if nobody is sick and nobody needs deliverance what else do you have to manifest Because if you look at God's original concept and plan for which he created us when 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 when, the, when Apostle Paul and the Apostles that worked with Jesus when they preached salvation they did not connect salvation to heaven when they preached salvation to us it was not it, it was not a, a means to go to heaven they never I have studied and I challenge you to go study it is you and I that tell people to give their life to Christ so that they can go to heaven but that was not it 
let me explain to you why if you do not manifest your judgment will be very great regardless of the fact that you are born again this is what happened God created the universe and created it when God was done he said all things were good the only thing that wasn't good was man and God repaired that part and so everything was perfect and God gave man the the mandate to manifest no animal was sick no party was sick but man was given a charge so what happened is that man went against God's ordinances for his life and so man plus the entire creation are you following me went into subjection to bondage as a result of what man did so if if man did not do anything wrong man will still be on earth so what will he be doing if nothing had gotten wrong that's that's actually the place we should be dreaming to get to so since creation stepped into bondage as a result of man's sin man's default god set out a plan now god came down and did not redeem creation god redeemed man but creation was still subject in bondage caused by man and so God gave man the responsibility redeem creation from bondage so the the, 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 the real purpose for which God redeemed us was so that we can redeem creation because creation was subject to bondage not after his own will not that he loved it it was our fault that creation went to bondage because the ground could open the ground could hear the leaves could hear they could speak everything that God created and now creation now is waiting that okay God took responsibility to redeem you and allow my own redemption in your hands and you are just sitting and looking at place And your greatest passion and desire is to escape back to go and meet the God that redeemed you and allow you here. So you must manifest. Yes. That trees will don't judge us. Because if they don't fulfill their own purposes, because when the trees were created i hope you know they also had an assignment from god there are people listen there are people that are sick because you and i have not manifested and if i speak you know that the manifestation i'm talking about now is not because it's not for us going to the hospital and praying for their healing is that if we can organize creation back to its original state just by them eating Just by them eating the, 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 the things that God created for man to live on, they will be perfectly healthy. Because it was how God ordained it to be. It's like I'm wasting my time. It was how God ordained it to be. So healing is an option, whereas creation is in bondage. No, you are not even understanding what I'm saying to you. Divine health is God's plan. Healing is an option where creation is in bondage. Yo, whatever was the way God designed it was that 
Whatever went wrong in your body, Adam, once you eat what I created, it will be balanced. You don't understand the miracle. Ask a doctor, they will tell you the miracle in creation. That all the drugs they make come from one thing God created. It is corrupted. Now imagine that it was in its fullness. It, it's liberated. I know you won't like the teaching because you don't you don't get it. I, I know what we <laughs> so you were supposed to sit down and you eat when you are done eating the running stomach balances after you have eaten but it's just that what you are also eating is corrupt what was supposed to heal you is giving you running stomach stomach ache and it will continue to do that until you manifest so creation will prepare us until you and I manifest it's fighting you and I fighting Tomorrow I will talk about spiritual ordination and then we can. But let me let me close. <laughs> it's challenge. I want to challenge you people. It is why, you see, we, we are supposed to get into nations, right? And heal nations. Because nations are sick. Yes, nations are sick. A light shall enter the city and heal the city. Not just an individual, he healed the city. What I'm challenging us is we must rise. We must we must desire. Oh God of mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy. Okay, let me go to the second. I, was, I, I began to teach you people about what? Um, the keys to destiny enthronement. Number one I said was what? We'll talk about this one when we meet. At, as pastors, I may talk about it. Do you know why people are not coming to our churches? Creation. Everything is working against. Creation is working against. You know what God did to Adam? <laughs> Do you know that God said for your sake the ground is cursed? Until the time Noah came and break the curse. manifestation this is a revolution some of you are supposed to transform economies of nations when money failed it was Joseph that manifested And preserve an entire generation I'm saying this because you have over celebrated our manifestations God gives us the power to heal you so that you can also manifest it and not that way you didn't hear what I'm saying So let's move on to the next um, keys to destiny enthronement. Uh, it's prophetic or destiny encounters. If you are going to fulfill your destiny, you need a prophetic slash destiny encounter. Please listen and listen well.
There are encounters until you have, you will never manifest your destiny to the fullest. Every time God wants to see, every time God wants to truly help you and change your level, he will organize an encounter that will introduce you to that new dimension. I just need you to follow me carefully today. Before you know it, we are done. Men are known for the encounters they have had. The authority by which men speak is not born out of what they read. You have read the same Bible. Your greatest authority to fulfill destiny will be born out of an encounter. Follow me. And it is not just encounters that changes you. It is your value for them. Because a lot of us do not value prophetic and destiny encounters. There are two things that every encounter will primarily do in your life. The first thing an encounter will do for your life is that it will produce a revelation. Follow me. It will produce a revelation that will give birth to a conviction. A conviction beyond every reasonable doubt. Some of you tomorrow, when I'll be teaching on spiritual enthronement, you will know that you don't even know the Jesus you are professing. Because what you know is what you read. The testimony of others is what you are reading. That is why you can easily backslide. That is why somebody told you, when I stand and I said, there is not, even if everybody in this world choose not to believe in Jesus, I will still believe. The reason is because at age 14, he came to me. So it, it doesn't matter. So the first thing a destiny and prophetic encounter will do is that it will produce what? A revelation that is designed to give you conviction. The reason is this. Let me tell you. There are. There are several natural circumstances. That oppose your destiny ordination. Ah, they told me that I'm preaching to pastors. So it's like. Do you people understand what I'm saying? Do you people understand? There are, there are a thousand, more than a thousand reasons why natural circumstances around your life that defies your ordination. Let me read you a scripture so you can catch up with me. Are you in church? Oh God of mercy, help me. Are you in church? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 26. Let me show you our calling. You will see that just by the way we were called, there are many reasons why we should not even believe that we are called. So we... I'm telling you, without a definite encounter, you will doubt your calling. Some of you, your deliverance is today. He said, look at it, read it. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. Please put, give me the amplified version so you understand. Okay, look, read it. One, two, three, go. 
For simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. Not many influential and powerful. Not many of high and noble bed. You see, the way God called us alone by every human standard everything around tells you that this is a lie it's just that some of you maybe you came from backgrounds that gave you a preview that your life will be great but i'm talking about my life i did not come from a background that gave any preview that my life will be great there was nothing around my life that looks great so even me doubted if god called me Because when you look around your life, you check educational wise, you don't stand a chance. And God is asking you to pastor people who are more educated than you. You look at standards, you don't have standards. In fact, you stand up on the altar to, to, to preach. You are looking at the way you are dressed. And the people you are preaching to, they are, they are dressing standard alone. Beats your own. You are afraid. Without an encounter, you will open your mouth to talk to them. How do you look at a diplomat and you are telling them, Don't say the Lord, when you don't even have first school? So, without a definite, you will pray this night. Without a definite night encounter, even if a prophet is telling you, You will doubt it. You will doubt it. You will doubt. Me, me, from where? How? How? To the some see some of us eh, there are some of us that if without a definite encounter you will tell God to choose another person there will be circumstances around your life that will make you doubt if you have never doubted thank God for you but there are things that will happen you will ask yourself did God call you that the only thing that will make you still do the call is the encounter you remember because if it's result, there is no result. If there is nothing around your life that proves a call. And so if it's not the encounter, you will not stand. Because a day will come, they will stone you. The people you are sent to preach to will stone you. Without an encounter, you will stop preaching. There will be a day you will go to preach. They will dishonor you in a such a way. If you don't have an encounter, you will not preach. You will drop the mic. So if you don't have an encounter of your destiny, people will frustrate you out of it. You wouldn't know when you have exchanged it and traveled abroad. Rather than to be suffering this thing. What did what happened to Moses? When he tried it, when the people dead with him, Moses resigned from his calling and said, I would rather go and marry and begin to do sheep flogging. When I am better, I do that. He took an encounter, an encounter. To restore his faith back in his calling. You need to study your Bible. Moses himself knew from childhood that he was called. But at a point in his life, he doubted. For 40 years, the guy could not believe he was called again. And you don't have up to 40 years to doubt. So you had better ask God to appear fast. You don't have 40 years. God, you will not wait to appear to me like you waited for Moses. appear to me now you need an encounter you if you don't know you need an encounter you need an encounter you don't know <laughs> I, have a I told you for yesterday a prophet looked at god and said lord you deceive me because god sent the prophet to the people and he spoke and the people rejected go and read your bible now you think that because it's God send you, God send you, you will just stay in the calling. If you don't have an encounter, now me they tell you. If not for encounter, I will, will I be preaching with this? See? You know how angry I was in my office before coming out? If not that I remember 
that he appeared to me. I won't be preaching. Thank you, Jesus. If not for encounter, if not for encounter, some of you are just running. God call me, God call me. It's because you have not met certain challenges. There are challenges you will meet you without your call. You without it. You without it. Did God call me? I say, so it, the first thing the encounter does is to bring light revelation to give you a conviction there is no result but you know that you know that you know you know that you know that you know how it's not what i have seen around my life there is an encounter you can't save people until you believe you are a savior my friend if you want to believe that you are a savior after you have saved them you will never save them So you need an encounter to establish that you are truly a savior. Brothers and sisters, Pastor Gideon, Pastor Gideon was ordained from heaven to be a mighty man of valor. But the circumstances from his father's house and the circumstances of his nation made him a farmer. He was a doubting farmer. He has read all the prophecies that God gave the, the parents. And he was doing farming. The time for liberation is coming. God is looking for his man. The man is in farm. What are you doing in the farm? He doesn't believe. When, when the angel appeared and told him, only the name they called him, the guy looked around, who else is in this farm? Gideon, mighty man of value, he said, oh, sir, you miss road. Let me give you a preview of my CV from where I'm coming from. You, you, you said again, I was who? Mighty man of what? Valor. Okay. Maybe in heaven, they don't understand who a mighty man of value is. They don't know how it looks like. So let me describe to you. I am coming from a family that is the least. That means if you put all families together, my family is the least. Okay, let's come, come up from that one. That already is enough disqualification. If you are looking for a man of value, you will not first of all come around my father's house. Are you getting is my father's house there are some of you where you are coming from you don't think that god can come there to look for a savior for a generation but it is there that god came it is there god picked this young man from lobe estate i will never stop saying it from lobe estate i will fail exam and they will come in gong gong head not many wives were called And would you be able to reconcile that this guy could not pass exam and yet he speaks English and talks sense and speaks the wisdom of God so that the glory at the end of the day goes to God because he cannot be traced to my father. My father was not a pastor. His own father was not a pastor. His father's father was not a pastor. So you can't tell me I'm doing this because my father was a pastor. Neither was my mother a pastor. So this is God's hand. God's hand. This is not an inheritance. It's not. I'm not even coming from a religious background. So Jesus and say, if you look at my father's house, it is the least. All right. If you now enter the house and you are checking, I am the least in the house. That is the least. In that least family, I am the least in the least family. So, sir, what did you say again? He said, you are a mighty man of value. Kid John says, sir, let's check this very well. If what you are saying is true, 
this night let rain not fall but let me give you impossible things because my life is an impossible life some of you need to put God to a test to prove your calling so that when next you hold the mic to talk you are talking with assurance and God is not afraid to prove himself because if he has truly made an investment in your life he should be enough he should he should be able to prove himself and give you an assurance so that we will stop encouraging you every day because a day comes all of us are discouraged all of us are discouraged and if you don't have your own personal encounter we'll be begging you every day and we don't have time to be begging every day have an encounter with God. This is destiny we are talking about. My father will never sleep one day and be worried whether I will disown him. Because I had an encounter. It's an encounter. Christianity is not a religion. There is a God in heaven. There is a God. There is real God. There is real God that has the ability to prove himself to us. And God proved himself to Gideon. And Gideon said, okay, on this wise I can go. You, you are going on the strength of what? Even Mary. When the angel appeared to Mary and said, thou art highly favored. Mary said, excuse me, sir. <laughs> Do you know who we are talking to? A girl without a father, a girl without mother. You know Mary's mother and father. Do you know the father? If you are looking for a somebody who is highly favored, you don't know their description. Why is this important? Because your destiny is bigger than you. You will need God to prove to you. When, can I tell you something? An encounter will reveal to you potentials that God has put in you that you are not aware of. See, there are deposits in you that you don't know. God does not necessarily need to give you something new. See, all the prayers you are praying for, new dimensions. I love the I love the terminology. Do you understand me? But you must understand what you are saying because sometimes you say you don't understand. When God came to meet Moses, what new thing did He give Moses? The same hostic. What God did to Moses was to reveal to Moses what he had since. The same stick. So when he's sending Moses, Moses is doubting. I'm going on what grounds? What is the capacity? He said, well, I said what, what do you have in your hands since? Moses says a stick. He said, no, it's not a stick. Throw it on the ground. Throw it. Drop it. So, what I'm saying to you is that you necessarily do not need anything new. Eh? You need a revelation by an encounter. Yes, you need an encounter where they will tell you that I, I told you that you need to value the encounter to believe it. When oh, you see all this new dimension you are seeking for, one of these days, you will collect a dimension that cannot sustain your destiny. A dimension that cannot fight your battle, even though it is new. What happened to David? He came to face Goliath, which was his destiny. And they gave him a new dimension. He was used to rob a gun. His old dimension. He was using his rubber gun in the bush and the rubber gun killed lion killed bear then he came to another battle they gave him new dimension when he put on the new dimension 
He said this thing does not fit. You know the problem we have with our generation is we love new trends. New trends. New trends. New things you follow. New things you follow. And you cannot face your Goliath with a new dimension. That old rocket thing that God gave you. That old stick. That primitive stick. All this, all this new new trends and new things are they, they, they are overweighted, they are, they are over heavy. You are not understanding what I'm saying. When I reflect on my calling as I'm preaching to you people, I'm coming out back as a primitive prophet. Primitive. I know where I'm coming from. There's a there's a lot of new dimensions. That are weighty, too heavy, too heavy, stressful. You know, use that your old stick, use that old rubber gun, use it. David said, Listen, sir, I have tried this, it's good dimension for you, but it is not for me. I cannot be wearing armor now. I came to waste my time in this church. Today. You know me, Kumba. It was rocket, oh. And suddenly there is just a wait now to do, to do, to do, um, oh, oh, to be too organized. Be too, uh, I, I love organization, but there is a primitive stick. There is a stick. There is a, there's an old stick. Over God, Goliath does not know it. He is rather familiar with this new dimension because Satan also upgrades. So we are using the weapons of today. He has already mastered them. Go and pick the old rugged cross. <laughs> that that old one, that old one, that rugged one, that rugged one. He has not yet, he has even forgotten that one. You use it. In fact, he may even minimize that one. And he will, he will not know when he will strike him. See, see, if I talk, just ask God for encounter. What did you give me? What was it that you gave me? That circumstances have made me to doubt the potency of it. What did you, what was it that you gave me? What was it? What was it that you gave me? That now I've become too civilized. Too civilized. That sometimes God will even tell you something. You are too civilized to hear it and say it. You need encounter. It brings revelation. It brings formation. There is, there is a formation. A spiritual stature you gain. After an encounter. Oh God of mercy. Apostle Paul is preaching from encounter. I became blind to preach this gospel. So stone me if you want. That's why they will tell him that the man that has this belt. Will be captured in Jerusalem and killed. He said no problem. I have seen worse than that. I am not preaching out of my will. I'm preaching because necessity is laid upon me. I saw the one I'm preaching. When he appeared to me, I didn't assume it was Jesus. I said, who are you? <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? I asked, who are you? Not assume that I saw you. Who are you? It was not an angel I saw. And check your Bible. Everywhere Paul went and he was persecuted. He recounted for that encounter. He recounted it. There are too many oppositions in destiny. Some will come from your own weakness. Some will come from those around you. Brothers, we are human beings. So. There will be days you will be jealous. 
You will look at somebody else, you'll be jealous. I'm telling you the truth. You'll be jealous. The only thing that will make you stay within your calling, as I'm talking about, is you remember the encounter. Yes, that thing only you and God knows. There will be many reasons to doubt. And I'm saying this because a lot of people have walked out of destiny when the day of doubt came. There will be a day of destiny. Give me the encounter. Do we pray? I can give you every great man. David was in the bush until Prophet Samuel came. Encounter him. Then something turned around. Saul was lost, looking for sheep. The sheep was found, he was still lost. Ah. A lost man is looking for a lost sheep. The lost sheep was found before him. And he said, Oh, maybe the thing is found, and my father is not worried about me. When he met the prophet, the prophet said, The sheep was found, it is you that is lost. There are some of you in church, you are going after souls, you are saved, you are lost. Because you don't even know yourself, you don't even know why you are here, you don't know your purpose, you are lost. You need a prophetic encounter. I know you are winning souls, like Saul was looking for the lost sheep. I know you are enthusiastic about souls, but do you know you? Who are you? Who are you? As you are looking for the lost sheep, who are you? So, who are you? And if someone does not show up, you will continue to look for the lost sheep. And yet, a part of your destiny has been written to be a king. Who are you? This is not a crusade. This is a convention. I challenge all of you. Do you know what will happen to the kingdom of darkness if every one of you understands what I'm saying? God is just at the door waiting for you to decide and encounter. You will step in. There will be a day, pastor, you will go to church. The church will be less than what you saw. But you have to preach like what you saw, not what you are seeing. I'm preaching by what I have seen in the spirit. My son here had a vision. What did you say in the vision? That there was crowd and no space. No space. This hall was small. Went to another hall. There was no space. Yes, my father. I was breaking this morning. That is the reality of my calling. And so I cannot speak as though. Sometimes you go to minister. Minister by your encounter. Not by the people you see. Because if you are looking at the people. They will discourage you. Remember the encounter you had. Such that when you stand before one man. Let the encounter be as valid. As when you will stand before thousands. I stop them and say. Get down from the praise. Redo another praise. Because I could sense those who are leading are discouraged by the number of people that were in church at that time and the fact that Sam was not going. But if you speak, you minister from an encounter, you will not care. That is the difference between you and Theophilus. Because Theophilus did not begin his ministry on the stage, he began it from an encounter in the sacred place. You, you began your own in a studio. That's the difference. You began in a studio. You began in a congregation. But he did not begin there. That is why I'm telling I, I went to a program where Chophilus was. The sound was not good. The music minister, you were there. But the guy ministered. I felt like going to give my life to Christ. Without anything. And you will stand. 
you are discouraged, you are looking at the place, look at your face. You are, do, do you know that there could be just one person in that church that God wants to touch? There's a real one case somewhere that God wants to touch, but because you are not ministering from an encounter, you are discouraged by the number of people in church and you can't speak, you can't sing, you can't worship. And I will tell you tomorrow, if God gives me the chance, there's a certain character you must obtain. Some of you don't have it. For this destiny God show you, he will, he will ask you. Some of you don't have the stature for what God has ordained you for. There's a maturity. There's a maturity that is not born out of head knowledge. A maturity time will fail me the syllabus is long it's long we must dwell we must learn to dwell here there are certain there's a certain maturity bishop that will come to you through an encounter nobody will teach you it The character of the spirit of your assignment will be wired in you by an encounter. Some of you are still misbehaving because you have not had the encounter for your destiny. There is a code of conduct for your destiny. You can't read it in the book. Only God knows it. I was talking to a man of God today. I said, the challenge I'm having is that according to my ordination, I can never be proud. I should never be proud, rather not that I cannot. I should never be proud. So you think I'm humble by choice? Who, who's, who, the, who's humble by? If you know the instincts that come to my heart sometimes, the things I want to exhibit, But by encounter, I am subject to a certain code of conduct. Most of you don't understand what I'm teaching. Yes, you don't even know that. I'm subject. Everybody can behave like that, not here and Philip. And maturity is not height. There are tall children and they are short mature people. Some of you here, you are taller than us. But you are, you are a child. <laughs> so if you measure maturity by height, you miss it. There are people with big churches who are not mature. Gifted, but they're immature. We are going to pray. You are, are you ready to pray for, for an encounter? Tomorrow, this place will erupt. I, I'm telling you, we will erupt. When I'm, I begin to deal with spiritual entonement, it will erupt. There will be an eruption here tomorrow. Please keep coming. Keep panting. Every message is a is a call is a call God this night wants to give you an encounter we are going to take some time to cry father prove to me that you have called me I... delete every doubt by an encounter I don't just want to be telling people I'm called from my head knowledge. Everybody go to God and cry. Go to God. Go to God. 
Zokopeli Shalabayata Masheke Parushe My destiny is too serious. Lord, give me an encounter. I come to the Hadana. I come on the back of Mila Hanoka. I come to the Giga. I come to Iko Somila. I come to the Iko Fatande Yusha. I come to Pando Iko Pena. I come to Yaru Katanaya. I come to the Beletu Zahiga. I come to, I come to Iko Dina Hakwatea. I come to Iko. I come to Iko. I come to Iko. Ekende baratondiga, okunde higa, okote te uske, ikunda hano, ekebe no tende, ikondo be inde hia, ekundo be kete, ikonde be noche, ikundo me le kute, ekonde liga, ekonde be petende, ikutu be le de kotanda, ekonda yanaka, ikatonde hika, ukonde le ketende, ikakonde be Bina, o convenente, o convenente, o camendo, o convenida, o convenida, o convenida, o convenente, 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 e coluda, e compreenda, o compreende, e coluda, o compreende, o compreende, o compreende, o ayada, o compreende, o compreende, e cura, e 
le punto terra incutida o con le cose incomoda 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 o copete le 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 o
you shall be in all at all. That, that thing that God gave you that you became blind of, that, that, that you have doubted that instrument of your manifestation. There's about to be a burning bush experience. Lift up your hands. Something is about to drop. Every doubt will be cleared away. You are tired of going back and forth. Father, tonight, let there be a burning bush experience for a man of God, for a woman of God, for a child of God, for a music minister, for a pastor, for a believer. Tonight, at the count of seven, reveal to them by encounter what you have given them for their manifestation. Holy Ghost one, Holy Ghost two, Pastor, your life is about to change. Young man, your life is about to change. Music minister, desire and encounter. Ah! Holy Ghost three, Shapara Kotosh. Holy Ghost four, Holy Ghost five, Holy Ghost six, Baresh. Number seven, touch. Help them, help them everywhere. Fire, an encounter of fire, an encounter of fire, a revelation. A revelation of what God gave you. I release the revelation. Rabba Shande Barato. By fire. An encounter of fire. Mashia Barato. Mashia Barato. Yake Barushebe. A conviction. A conviction is coming. A conviction is coming. A conviction is coming. Clarity about your destiny. Clarity about your calling. Clarity now. I release the fire of God for that clarity. I release fire for clarity. The cup of Shiakata. Let the God that appeared to Moses appear to us now. Let the God that appeared to Moses appear to a man of God. Appear to a woman of God. Appear to a child of God. Kabara Shavia. I clear every doubt. I clear every doubt. I clear every doubt. I clear every doubt. By divine encounter, I clear every doubt. Your purpose will be clear. Let there be a clarity of your purpose by this encounter now. As I'm speaking, the Holy Ghost is walking. Holy Spirit of God, give your people encounter. Give them encounters. Clear their doubts. Ubarash. That healing unction God gave you, that you are almost doubting because you have been praying, nobody is healed. Fire is coming, fire is coming to refine that same stick, to refine that same stick, that old stick, to refine it. Every gifting that God gave you, that you are almost doubting now, let there be a refining of it. This be a night of divine encounters. You are the God of encounter. Something has dropped. Something has dropped. Something has dropped. Something has dropped. There were five ladies I saw that God was dropping something on them. Your lives will never remain the same. Go ahead and begin to thank Him. Lord, I see these encounters. See your encounter with thanksgiving.
See your encounter with Thanksgiving. I see the number 10 in the spirit. I'm asking God, what does it mean? And God is saying, tell the people, everybody, you have come to a mountain of encounter. That you, 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 ah, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Everybody here, whether you have given a sacrifice or not, you will come tomorrow with 10,000 francs. If you have it, drop it on the altar now. But if you don't have it, come tomorrow with 10,000 francs on this mountain. God spoke to me in the house, and I saw 10. If you are in the spirit, you would have heard something like that. You would have heard something like that. I can't lie in an encounter. Yes. If you have your own, just remove it and drop it on the altar. If you have your own, just drop it. You are sealing this encounter. You don't know what has happened to you tonight. Everybody, if you don't have it tomorrow, bring the ten thousands. In fact, those who are dropping it, just come forward and I will pray for you now. Even if you don't have it, but tomorrow you are bringing it, just come forward. I don't want, I want to distinguish everybody here yeah. if everybody's bringing it everybody come but if you are not bringing it just stay in the crowd this is an instruction that god gave just now i saw 10 i saw 10 i saw 10 come fast you don't understand what has happened tonight you think this is not the crusade come come great way for everybody to make sure they have a space at the altar God will provide it for you. Don't even bother. God will provide it to prove to you that it is God. He will provide it clean. He will provide it. Yes. Talk to God while you are there. Just talk to Him. Father, by this sacrifice, I see this testimony. I see this encounter. Father, I saw ten. And 10 represents covenant. 10 represents covenant. 10 represents tithes. Today, on this altar, Lord Jesus, I enter a covenant with you. Tying to your faithfulness that everyone who has responded to this sacrifice, my Father, Number one, give them definite encounter of their destinies. Father, enter a covenant that they will fulfill their destinies. Everything you have ordained them to be. Today, this night, on this altar of revolution. Let it be sealed forever. Let it be sealed forever. Let it be sealed forever. Whether what happens in this life, they will fulfill their destinies. In the name of Jesus. When you leave me today. Let it be clear. He said gather to me. My saints. Those who have made a covenant with me. By sacrifice. These are them. These are them. Some of you by morning. There will be an explosion in your destiny. An explosion. The people connected to your destiny are showing up. They are showing up. They are showing up. And over, they will show up overnight. 
and any cage that was holding you bound from leaving the reality of your destiny by this sacrifice I command that cage broken I command that cage broken any weight that was on your life hindering you from rising up to your destiny I command that weight to be removed from your life now in the name of Jesus any doubt is cleared go for them for fit destiny in Jesus name rise to your feet go back to your seat if you have yours will drop it if you don't have it tomorrow you can pray you know that if I want to ask you to give re-sacrifice I won't ask you for ten thousands I saw ten I saw ten the covenant seat for this night please be seated tomorrow invite your friends invite your loved ones